Here are three ways to make free Minecraft servers for your Minecraft game. The first way I'm gonna show you is the easiest way. Easiest way isn't always the best way. So make sure to watch throughout the video and also make sure to subscribe for more server related stuff and all that. The easiest way is via Turnos. Now, a Turnos is a very easy way to make free Minecraft servers, whether it's paper, modded, whether it's both, Mohais is in here, which gives you the ability of plugins and also mods. Overall, there's a lot of ways that you can make Minecraft servers and they even allow you to change the software into specific, you know, mod packs. So here we have, you know, all the stuff that you can change it into. Vanilla, of course, snapshots, mod packs, paper, spigot, Glowstone, Forge, Fabric, Mohais. So you get the idea. And overall, it's pretty, pretty good. However, the main issue that I have with, you know, Eternos is that while it is the easiest thing, it is also the slowest. This server is usually the slowest server out of all the server types. Now, slow how exactly? Well, you see how the render distance is a little short. Um, for some people, this is normal, but it really shouldn't be this short for everyone. Some people have good computers, yet are not used to the fact that they are seeing quite the fog around this area. And as you can see here, you can kind of see the chunks slowly load in. Yeah, it's not like the worst exp experience, but with mods and everything involved, it's going to be a painful experience if you're going to try to launch it up with mods. It's not impossible per se, but it's going to be one hell of a time. It's, while it is the most easiest, the simplest way to play Minecraft with your friends, it's definitely not the best way. So let's go over the other ways to, you know, play Minecraft with your friends. This is the Essentials mod, or the Essentials, I guess, you know, add-on for Minecraft, and it gives you a variety of things. But the main important thing is that you can join someone's single-player world with this mod. Before I get into it, everyone must download this you know, mod in order for this to work. And there's only a certain amount of versions. So right now, they only really have um, Forge for 1.8.9, Fabric, and 1.18.1 Fabric. So as you can see, it's not exactly the cleanest of, you know, versions of list. Um, you know, they don't have 1.16.5. People like 1.16.5 for mods, so that's going to be out the door. And overall, it's there's, there's just a limit to what you can do with essentials. So uh, there's also installers here. Let's actually try the installer real quick. Now, what's weird is that I I downloaded it, but I don't see it, so I don't know. <laughs> Well, either way, you can download it as a mod, so you can do the, you know, the, the long way around, which is downloading the mod, and then also downloading Forge, so you search up Forge, you download it like that, go to 1.8.9, hit download for the, you know, latest, and then you hit this. Don't click anything here. Do not click anything here. Wait for, uh, just download link here, which, this is also going to be inside of... The, 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 the download links down below in this, you know, the description so you don't need me to like go through the process because I'm going to show you the download link and it will just immediately download for you guys and then you just double click this or single click it really but you know and then install for clients and then it should show the clients and then you would open up you know this thing the forge um, you may need to go into installations create new installation and find it yourself but as you can see here, I have it right here. So, uh, and then once you have it downloaded, right, what you gotta do is that you have to open up the folder, find the mods folder, right? And then once you find the mods folder, you would shove in the essentials right there. I actually have a bunch of mods here, but there I go, the essentials in here. And then let's hit play. Okay, so I think the mod launched up pretty fine. As you can see here, we have the character here. So, the first thing you need to do in order for you to actually, like, you know, uh, join a server, I guess, 
is that you need to, you know, add people as your friends within this mod. So you can hit this thing, new friend, and then search in the username here, and then they'll it will send the the request to that person, right? So that's how you add your friends, and then they'll receive it once they download the mod as well. They'll receive it, and then you know they can do, you know, accept it, decline it, etc. And so once you know that's settled, you go create a new world, or you know this works for existing worlds as well. Join your world, and uh, I create my world right now. And then once you do that, you have an invite friends button here. Uh, then next, and then survival, hopefully. And then hard cheats on, because why not? And then you invite your friends there, right? So that's how it works. Overall, it's a very simple process. And I honestly think that, you know, it's a very underrated mod, but either way, uh, the pros and cons to this. Um, the pros is that you will experience almost zero lag if you're the one hosting the server. The con is everyone else will experience network issues. The chunk load will be fine, but the network issues will be slightly there. And it's not like really bad network issues. It's better than Eternos, but it's, you know, it's still, you know, relatively a problem depending on if you have mods. And this does work with other mods installed. Like if you have a mod pack installed and people have mod packs installed and you know, it works like that as well. Also a big con is um, this isn't a 24 seven server. It's only 24 seven if your character is within the game. If they leave, no one else can play on your server. So you're going to have to like keep your character on there in order for people to actually like, you know, play the game overall. Very, very good if you're going to be playing stuff within the moment, but it's not good for long-term situations. So, let's go over the final way, which provides you the best FPS, the best performance, but is also quite challenging to do and is very daunting on your computer. Alright, let's get right into it. And the final way to create a micro server for your friends is the most complicated but effective and fastest in terms of server performance and all that. This is the best way to create a Minecraft server and have unlimited control while also having the best performance for your Minecraft server. Now it's arguably better to use essentials in some cases, but this case is the best case scenario for most situations. You download this and basically it's called the play it you know dot gg and there are two ways of actually using the play dot gg this is the neuro way so i'm going over the neuro way the previous way was slightly different but you know now in this instance you actually need to create your own minecraft server so i actually have the server set up here but how do you create your own minecraft server well there's a few ways of doing it and i'm going to show you the modded way by that i mean there's a way to create a vanilla Minecraft server, but because we installed a forge earlier, um, I'm going to show you how to install a modded Minecraft server. Uh, and and you, you could just, you know, get the Minecraft jar for Minecraft by just searching it up. And it works the same way as this way, except for forge has a few extra steps in order to do it. So let's actually just delete the server here and keep the installer because that's what I had before. So it's the same installer, right? But you can set self for server. And then you hit the three dots here to open up the Minecraft folder that has your, I guess, server or like, you know, in this case, it's new folder five. Yeah, I'm very good at naming things. So you hit, you know, install and then you successfully download the Minecraft server. And then what's going to happen is you're going to have to download um, more assets and all that in order to create the server by double clicking on this thing and then it will start to create the server the mods folder is here you can shove in your mods here and also the eula text you need to set this thing right here the eula text to true because then you would accept all the you know eula agreements and then you have to double click on it again uh double click the universal dot jar and there you go your server is created. Now, how do you give it more performance? Some people feel like their server isn't performing very well via this way. And, you know, people are saying, oh my God, you said that this was the most, you know, high performing way of making a server. And it is. The way to add more RAMs to it 
is to create a dot .bat file. In order to do that, you do new, you do text documents, and then you go over here and call it, let's say, start.bat. Open it up, or sorry, right click it, and then show more options, edit, and then it'll open up the notepad, and then paste what's in my description. All right, so here we have all the stuff that we need to, you know, do this. And so here we have the RAM. So if you have four gigs spare, you can make this a four gig server. Um, if you have like six gig spare, make this a six gig server. You can make this a 10 gig server. Who knows? Um, me personally, I had it set as 14 because I have 32 gigs total. So I have a lot of gigs spare. And then this is like how much gigs would be on the server already, I guess. And it would be like running the background. So I set this to like around four. Maybe if you have like six spare, you know, it really depends on how much RAM you have. Make sure to check up on your RAM via the about page in your system settings. So once you have this set up, all right, hit save on the bat file. You just double click on this. And then it's running the server, as you can see. It's actually finished. Wow, that's fast. And so what you gotta do next is that you have to get the play.gg in the same folder. Actually, you don't really need to have it in the same folder, but it's for organization reasons. I actually had the old file in here by accident, so I had to cut out that. And I meant to have this one in, right? And so you just double click on this. And then here, look at this. The, it gives the IP. So you just hit the IP, you paste it there. And there you have it. We're actually on the server. And it's the best running server because it uses your RAM in order to provide, you know, more uh, chunk loading. And it would use your internet connection, depending on how good it is, along with some tunnel, I guess, the, 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 the tunnel connection, in order to buy, provide, you know, the, the best uh, performance in terms of the where the tunnel location is towards where everyone else is on the server exactly. It's a little complicated to explain, but long story short, the tunnel is from, let's say, New York, because I'm in New York. And then because it's a New York tunnel, it would be good for me because I, you know, live relatively within the area of that tunnel. And even people outside of the country, like Aluba, uh, had somewhat of a decent time with play.gg and he managed to play fine even though he's in the UK so really it doesn't matter too much however it matters somewhat in terms of like the location regardless point being it works fine and usually there is some issues here and there with play.gg because of how complicated it is so you would have to take that up with the dev team I'll leave their discord down below but Overall, these are three ways of making Minecraft servers. In my opinion, if you are making a simple Minecraft server, then Eternos should be fine for you. That is why I mentioned Eternos because Eternos is usually fine for anyone as it is. If you're making a modded server, Eternos might work, but it'll be better to use something like Essentials. And if you don't have the version for Essentials that required, if you know that is required for your mod pack, then you would have to use playit.gg so overall play.gg is the best way to make a server however you know people might prefer the other ways for a simpler process and yeah thank you guys for watching if you liked the video like one and subscribe go ahead and subscribe and remember to be top and beat up us guys next video take care and good